Hi guys, this is Sean with Greenleaf again, and everybody keeps sending in questions to the website of how the, the castings are made. So I'm going to take you through it from step one to the finished product. First thing you do is you go to your worm bins, which are over here, which are these long cement bins here that you see stacked up on the side there. And you shovel your worm castings into a wheelbarrow like this. And then you take your bucket. The reason why we have it off is so you can see all the parts of the machine, which I think is important for people who want to build one and who want to actually learn the process of making castings in a commercial capacity. You take your bucket, you shovel up some worm castings, you put it through here. Now, if you look in here, you're going to see that there's plastic baffles inside the, the trummel. Trummel's about seven feet long and three and a half feet wide on this machine. This machine is capable of making 300 pounds of castings an hour. And these, the reason why you use plastic baffles and not metal is you don't want to cut your worms up too bad. And this works pretty well. You shovel it in there. And as it goes around and around, you want to just push it in as it goes around and around until it's gone, and then you keep scooping it out. And what happens is, is that as it turns, it turns on the shaft here, and there's a collar right here that keeps it in place. And if you also notice, in, South, in Florida, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of sand, and to keep your sand, if you keep your legs from sinking into the ground. I made wide feet on the bottom of these, which is very important because if you're, because you're dealing with a lot of weight with these castings and if one side sinks in more than the other, you're you're, you'll be off balance and the machine will come apart. And you don't want to be art fart and tear the whole machine apart. So there you are. And uh, you come through here and if you notice, I've got a screen. It's not just a regular screen. It doesn't look real good, fancy, but it does do the job. You notice I seamed it up with great stuff. The reason why I do that, if you look in here, you'll see that there's all thread inside this trommel. And that is used to break down your bigger chunks of castings. And over a period of time, as you can see, material gets wound around your all thread. So you want to be able to get at that and open it up. So we... In order to open it, all you have to do is pop this seam right here, open it up, clean it out, change your screen if you need to, and go on and uh, clean your all threads out. That'll make your machine work a lot better. And put this back on. It's interchangeable. The size. We are, and it's very important to use seven one eighth inch no, yeah, hardware cloth. Mm -hmm. You can get it online. You don't want to use the, you don't want to use the quarter inch because if you do, all your baby worms will go away and you will never have any more population in your worm bins. That's important. Now, we seal it up with gorilla tape. The reason why we do that, again, you want to have your screen accessible so you can change it out. We use these belts for tightness to tighten it on there so it doesn't slide around as the trouble goes around and around. Now, if you come to the back of the machine, this is where the discharge is. And there's also a collar here that keeps it in place. And there's a Lovejoy connection here, which, is in, which goes around. Now, as I open it up here, well, as you open it up, anyway, I got to get a wrench to do that. There's a spider gear in here that wears out over time a plastic spider gear that is used to connect the two lovejoy connections this is a pool pump regular pool pump First car. and that's how you set that up now uh the the tube comes in the tube comes here at the end and there's a cone and the worms stick to the cone and the big chunks drop down here in this bin, and the worms drop in the other bin. And as you can see behind me, we just stack up the bins here, 
and keep them watered until we put our bin back together, which is at the when we get done sifting. And we also have these cross braces in here for these for our, these cross braces are important to support the shock. These are shock absorbers, basically like leaf springs on a car. So when it moves back and forth, these boards flex back and forth and allow allow your machine to stay in place and not walk on you. Uh, that's basically it. And I will talk to you turn later. On, turn on. And uh, now we're going to turn it on and I'll show you how it works. I'm going to run some through there. Hold on a minute. I gotta figure out. All right, here we go. As you can see, the tr the trumble's turning, but it's turning slow. About 20 revolutions a minute. And like I say, you take your material like so. Shovel it in here like this. You drop your bucket, you take your hand and you work the material in. Make sure it doesn't fall out this way. Make sure it falls out. This, make sure it all goes in the screen like so. You gotta keep your hand right here. And work it like a sweep, like that. Don't go back and forth because you'll mess it up because half of it will come out that way. You wanna use it like a sweep, just like that. See the material that comes down, it looks all, good, all black, that's what you want, that's a finished product. We also have a separator which helps us out here. It's a little folded piece of metal. It helps separate the big chunks and the worms it's in between these two boxes here. It's a pretty simple piece, but it's, impo it's an important piece. It cuts down on your weight. See it coming out the other end here. This is the this is the part that we use to go back in the worm bin. I'll tell you, here comes here comes some more material. Kind of see it coming out the other end there. How it runs, you see it's separating it into the two bins. Every once in a while, you want to run up here and clean your separator off, like this. Other than that, it pretty much does its thing. You want to keep an eye on this Lovejoy thing, make sure it doesn't separate on you, too. If it does, you got to slide it back together, adjust these accordingly. <coughs> You want to put a couple bricks under one end of it, you have one end slightly higher than the other. The reason why you do that is it keeps tension on this Lovejoy connection and it keeps it from coming apart. That's it. I hope I helped you out, guys. And uh, that's how you sift casting. <laughs> Any questions, you can call, you can... Leave me an email at greenleafwormfarm.com. Thank you for your time. <laughs>